Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to Shloka Day. Today, Shloka, Shloka number four of chapter 17. Yajante Satvika Devan. Yajante Satvika Devan. Yaksharaksham Sirajasaha. Yaksharaksham Sirajasaha. Pretan Bhutaganam Shanye. Edan Budaganam Shanye. Yajante Tamasajana. Yajante Tamasajana. Put forward meaning translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Shila Isi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ki Jai. Yajante. Yajante. Worship. Worship. Sattvika. Sattvika. Those who are in the mode of goodness. Those who are in the mode of goodness. Devan. Devan. Demigods. Demigods. Yaksha Rakshamsi. Yaksha Rakshamsi. Demons. Demons. Rajasaha. Rajasaha. <coughs> Those who are in the mode of passion. Those who are in the mode of passion. Pretan. Pretan. Spirits of the dead. Spirits of the death. Bhuta Ganan. Buddha Ganan. Ghosts. Ghost. Cha. Cha. And. And. Anye. Anye. Others. Others. Yajante. Yajante. Worship. Worship. Tamasaha. Tamasaha. In the mode of ignorance. The mode of the ignorance. Janaha. Janaha. People. People. Translation. Men in the mode of goodness. Men in the mode of goodness. Worship the demigods. Worship the demigods. Those in the mode of passion. Those in the mode of passion. Worship the demons. Worship the demons. And those in the mode of ignorance. Those who are in the mode of ignorance. Worship ghosts and spirits. Worship gods and uh, ghosts and spirits. So Prabhupada writes in the purport in this verse, the Supreme Personality of Godhead describes different kinds of worshippers according to their external activities. According to scriptural injunction, only the Supreme Personality of Godhead is worshipable. But those who are not conversant with or faithful to the scriptural injunctions worship different objects according to their specific situations in the modes of material nature. Those who are situated in goodness generally worship the demigods. The demigods include Brahma, Shiva and others such as Indra, Chandra and the sun god. There are various demigods. Those in goodness worship a particular demigod for a particular purpose. Similarly, those who are in the mode of passion worship the demons. We recall that during the Second World War, a man in Calcutta worshipped Hitler because thanks to that war, he had amassed a large amount of wealth by dealing in the black market. Similarly, those in the modes of passion and ignorance generally select a powerful man to be God. They think that anyone can be worshipped as God and that the same results will be obtained. Now, it is clearly described here that those who are in the mode of passion worship and create such gods and those who are in the mode of ignorance and darkness worship dead spirits. Sometimes people worship at the tomb of some dead man. Sexual service is also considered to be in the mode of darkness. Similarly, in remote villages in India, there are worshippers of ghosts. We have seen that in India, the lower class people sometimes go to the forest and if they have knowledge that a ghost lives in a tree, they worship the tree and offer sacrifices. These different kinds of worship are not actually God worship. God worship is for persons who are transcendently situated in pure goodness. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Sattvam Vishuddham Vasudeva Shabditam. When a man is situated in pure goodness, he worships Vasudeva. The purpose is that those who are completely purified of the material modes of nature and who are transcendently situated can worship the Supreme Personality of 
God. So <clears throat> there's one more paragraph of uh, Prabhupada's uh, purport. We'll read that and we can discuss. The impersonalists are supposed to be situated in the mode of goodness and they worship five kinds of demigods, <clears throat> which is Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva, uh, Mother Parvati, uh, Surya Dev, and Lord Ganesha. They worship the impersonal Vishnu form in the material world, which is known as philosophized Vishnu. Vishnu is the expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But the impersonalists, because they do not ultimately believe in the Supreme Personality of Godhead, imagine that the Vishnu form is just another aspect of the impersonal Brahman. Similarly, they imagine that Lord Brahma is the impersonal form in the material mode of passion. Thus, they sometimes describe five kinds of gods that are worshipable. But because they think that the actual truth is impersonal Brahman, they dispose of all worshipable objects at the ultimate end. <clears throat> Prabhupada is talking about uh, those who do not believe that the Lord has a form. <clears throat> they worship the five um, Pancha Upasana. They worship the five different uh, godheads. In conclusion, the different qualities of the material modes of nature can be purified through association with persons who are of transcendental nature. So, <clears throat> those who are in the mode of goodness worship the demigods. So, those who are in the uh, mode of pure goodness worship Lord Krishna or Lord Narayan. So, demigod worship the Lord critiques in chapter 3 and again in chapter 9 of the Bhagavad Gita. So the Lord says even to worship the demigods he has to give you the faith to worship the demigods. Why does he give you the faith? Because one day as you continue to make progress and your faith increases because the demigod supplies you with whatever you have worshipped him or her for then ultimately one day you will have faith in worshipping Krishna also. So the Lord says, but then the demigods, whatever they give you is not permanent. It will end with this life. Whereas whatever Lord Krishna gives you is permanent because whatever spiritual benedictions he gives you will continue into your next life. This Bhuta and Preta. Bhuta is a ghost. <clears throat> and Preta are when you die, uh, because you have to wait to get your next body for those 12 days, so you get a transition body. Though that transition body is subtler than a human body and therefore that body is called the preta. Ghosts are even more subtle than the pretas. They are considered to be higher than human beings only because their nature is subtle. It does not mean that their consciousness is higher. It is just that their body is more subtle than the gross form that human beings have. So ghosts generally because of uh, <clears throat> having committed suicide, uh, they take on this uh, subtle body and they roam around uh, until their soul is released. So the preta is actually a temporary form. So all of us will have a preta body before we take on our next body. Of course, if we finish practicing Krishna consciousness in this life, then you don't have to worry. Immediately you will be taken to the spiritual world. You don't have to take a preta body first. But that preta body lasts for those 12 days and then on the 13th day, uh, it is said that uh, that particular soul will get a new body. If it is not ready to get a new body, then it goes to Pitriloka. So that is how um, Garuda Purana actually explains it. I have not read the Garuda Purana, I've, but I have read commentary about uh, this Bhuta and Preta, etc. So from another parampara, it is said that the good are drawn to the good and the bad to the bad. Those in Tamaguna are drawn toward ghosts and spirits. Despite the evil and cruel nature of such beings, those who are rajasic get drawn to the yakshas. Yakshas are semi-celestial beings who exude power and wealth. And Rakshasas. <clears throat> so um, the Lord has said in this particular shloka that if your faith is influenced by the 
a guna of rajas, then you are worshipping demons and powerful beings. So here specifically mentioned is yakshas and rakshasas. Rakshasas are powerful beings who embody sensual enjoyment, revenge and wrath. They even offer the blood of animals to appease these lower beings with faith in the propriety of such lowly worship. Those who are imbued with Sattva become attracted to the worship of celestial gods in whom they perceive the qualities of goodness. So we worship the Devatas because we perceive the good qualities in them. Therefore, you are attracted to the good. However, worship is perfectly directed when it is offered to Lord Krishna. That means the most perfect kind of worship is actually worshipping the Supreme Lord. Everything else is uh, a different lower level of worship. So even the Puranas are split into the mode of goodness, uh, the mode of passion, and the mode of ignorance. So that means the Vedic scriptures accommodate all kinds of desires, even those who are in the mode of ignorance, even for them, there are scriptures. There is a very long commentary written by His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu on this particular shloka, describing all of these Puranas and uh, the context of worship in the different modes. You can read that. I wanted to actually read that, but it's very long. So you can read that and get more information. So this is Chaitanya Charan Prabhu's commentary on uh, this particular shloka. The Bhagavad Gita analyzes different kinds of worship according to the modes. People in Sattvagun, mode of goodness, worship the gods. People in Rajagun, mode of passion, demoniac beings. And people in Tamogun, mode of ignorance, ghostly beings. How can this analysis be reconciled with the well-known Puranic classification given in the Matsya and other Puranas, Sat Sattvika Puranas delineate the worship of Vishnu, Rajasik Puranas the worship of Brahma, and Tamasik Puranas the worship of Shiva. So if these three sets of Puranas that is broken up by the different Gunas are encouraging you to worship Vishnu, Brahma, and Shiva, then how can we talk about demons, Bhutas, and Pretas, etc.? Following scripture and worshipping a scripturally described higher being requires a basic level of goodness, which is what the Gita verse stresses. Simultaneously, Vedic scriptures strive to accommodate as many people as possible within the broad house of dharma. So they delineate various objects of worship to attract people at varying levels of consciousness. So even if your consciousness is very low, still our scriptures cater to your mood, which is what the Puranic hierarchy refers to. Thus, all worshippers of the gods are in goodness. But Vishnu worshippers are in goodness, goodness. So there is a combination of the gunas. It's not one exclusive guna. So you can have a combination of uh, uh, passion and ignorance, goodness and ignorance. So Brahma worshippers in passion, goodness. And Shiva worshippers in ignorance, goodness. Overall, each mode is not monochrome. Monochrome means a single color. But has shades corresponding to different levels of consciousness within that mode. So none of us are just black or white. You know, we all have different degrees of consciousness and that consciousness may vary different depending on different situations and experiences. So the gunas combine with each other to form various different shades of colors. So to deride all worshippers of the gods as belonging to lower modes is simplistic and inaccurate. By appreciating the modes Multi-level nature, we can reconcile other seemingly contradictory scriptural assertions. For example, all animals are said to be in Tamogun, yet they are also classified according to the modes. For example, cows are said to be in goodness. 
tigers in passion, and monkeys in ignorance, or consider the two kinds of scriptural references to cows. Many references cherish them as special among animals, but some references treat them as symbols of ignorance. For example, the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto, 84th chapter, 13th verse compares ignorant people to Ghokara, cows and donkeys. By appreciating the mode's multi-level nature, we can both avoid passing blanket value judgments and reconcile apparent contradictions. So the way the gunas influence your faith is also not very straightforward. There are layers of consciousness that are catered to uh, via our scriptures. But broadly speaking, the Lord is saying, those who are generally in the mode of goodness are going to be worshipping the devatas. Those who are in the worship of passion are worshipping the demons who are very, very powerful. And those in the mode of ignorance, they tend to worship ghosts and spirits. So nothing is very simple and straightforward, even in faith and worship. So from here, the Lord is now going to talk about different types of foods um, that are influenced by the gunas that which we consume. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification. If you'd like to join our classes every day, please check the details in the description section of this video. We look forward to serving you.